So now we don't have to get too detailed because I know a lot of our listeners don't know a lot of technical jargon. But from what you do day to day project management, how would you explain that at a high level? How do I explain this without boring your, your people to tears um, <laughs> or myself for that matter? Um, right. So in my role, what I do is not very sexy, I guess, because when you think of BMW, you think of what? You think of cars, you think of fast cars, big engines, you know, luxury, this and that. Um, and so when you think about engineering, as somebody who did automotive engineering going into BMW, you're thinking, okay, you probably get to drive the cars, you're, you know, designing something, you're validating some kind of technology, this and that. And no. So what I'm doing is I work in the project sphere, so I'm focused on a specific vehicle that we're working on at a certain time and, and and we do you know we prototype a lot in order to validate all the stuff that we're releasing um that we're launching right in the next iterations of the next year of the cars that you'll see in the dealerships or in a totally new project and my role in that is to make sure that all the parts for these prototypes um get there on time because um what kinds of parts uh all every part that makes up a car every part, everything from the wheels to the engine, to the panels, everything, every, absolutely everything. So um, when, when, the, when a series car is built, a, a, a customer car is built, right? All the processes are very fine tuned. The suppliers know what they're doing. They have a very specific tack time when they're supposed to build a, a part and then, you know, package it and then send it off to us. Some of it is just in time. Some of it we, we keep in our warehouse. Um, all of that, when we're launching a new product, a new car, and we're prototyping all those, a lot of those parts are not coming in the, 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 the series way. So you have all of these exceptions and those exceptions have to be managed. And that's where somebody like me comes along because there's a lot of things that there has to be a lot of cross communication between suppliers, the designers, our logistics to make sure that the parts come in and they come in reliably because we build a, you know, we don't build just a few prototypes. We build quite a few. Okay. Um, so yeah, yeah, certainly a different process when you have all the things baked for a car that's manufactured. I mean, you think about the big plants and putting this part together and robots and that's, I obviously don't know that much about it either. Um, yeah. But when you're doing, you know, tens of cars or hundreds of cars instead of thousands, you would need someone to, to pick up the pieces and organize. And so kind of back to the communicator point, you need to work between a lot of different teams. You're meeting a lot of people. You're touching a lot of you know, German people, American people, and right. bringing that all together, correct? I mean, it, it all, I mean, what is project management? And it's, it's ultimately managing people it, without, and a lot of, and in my case, it's without authority, right? So <laughs> that, I mean, that, that's what it is. It's, it's, it's working with people and it's, and it's kind of leading without authority. That's what it comes down to. And right, the technical, my technical education, I think helps in some ways because I can maybe, if, let's say if I have a colleague that's not, um, doing their due diligence, I can maybe dive into a technical topic and figure it out. But then ultimately that bogs you down in a specific piece of that um, process that you could have spent, you know, elsewhere and would have been more efficient.